This historical arch, which was built in the early 1920s, is located between Doherty and Mitchell County. It is located on Old Georgia Highway 3, which was originally known as the Dixie Highway. The Dixie Highway was a north to south highway that joined Michigan to the southern tip of Florida. We will travel south down the old Dixie Highway near the town of O'Clockney, Georgia and visit a unique but very significant tourist attraction. Today, we're at the Pope's Museum in Southwest Georgia. I'm Danny, and welcome to my channel, Danivator, where my experiences become your adventure. Remember to please subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified when I release my next video. Well, let's go explore this awesome place. This awesome front gate sets the tone of our adventure today. We will experience artistic overload. We will be given a personalized tour by its present owner, and then we'll end this video at the gravesite of Laura Pope Forrester. This front view of her old home is a one-of-a-kind design. Kim, 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 Kim. Kim, Kim. Michelle and Dan Dean purchased this home and are in the process of putting this place back on the map. We owe our freedoms to those who laid their heads on the altar. Laura Pope Forrester, 1953. It's amazing what you can do with concrete. A lot of love went into these creations. I hope you are as excited as I am about learning about these sculptures. There's a busy bee. Here's a behind the scenes look at that front gate. Let's go inside and explore before our tour begins. This area is like a front parlor. And by the piano, you can purchase some hats, shirts, and other souvenirs. Here's some artwork by Laura Pope Forster. The Pope Museum is also a bed and breakfast. Here is one of the rooms for some lucky guests. And the dresses in the dining room should remind you that the Pope Museum is an excellent place for weddings. Let's go see what's upstairs. I'm looking forward to looking out this upstairs balcony. Wow.
Just so many intricate designs. I get the feeling like I'm up in a turret of a castle. And look at those old wheels. Now it's time for Michelle, who is the owner, to give us that tour. Hi, this is the home of Laura Pope Forrester, one of the oldest self-taught art environments in the United States. Laura Pope Forrester lived from 1873 until 1953, where she single-handedly, in a time where women had no rights, no property rights, voting rights, or even um, business opportunities, she chose to use her property to create an art environment that showcased thank you to the veterans and the importance of women. We're going to kind of take you around the place and give you some opportunities to get to know this astounding woman. In front of me is um, one of her art pieces. This is an original mural and Laura used to create her own paint from berries on the property and she painted on the walls. So literally she painted the walls created her own frame from crown molding and her signature is globs of mortar that she created herself from sand at Pope's Creek and bags of concrete. It is said that Laura Pope Forrester would prefer a gift of a bag of concrete more than she would a new dress. Before she died in 1953, she had single-handedly created 200 statues and wall-to-wall -wall murals as well, as well as other amazing place pieces on this property. When Laura and her husband, Mr. Pope, bought the house, it was a one-story house. That was in 19, I'm sorry, 1894. Before she died in 1953, she had added the back half of the house and the second story and the third story gable. When you look around at Pope's Museum, you will see in this room murals that we have had returned, including one by Oscar-winning Jonathan Demme. Now let me understand, be very clear, that this is an original Laura Pope Forrester mural. Both of these are. Oscar-winning director Jonathan Demme had it, and his wife Joanne Howard donated it back to the mural museum. And here is a second one donated by award-winning art um, professor and artist himself, Jim Roche. Again, as I said earlier, you can see she made the paint, the frames from crown molding, and then you see her signature globs of concrete. Additionally, um, that is a mural from the 1930s that was an hour and a half from here, directing guests to come to Pope's Museum. Before her death in 1953, Laura Pope Forster created one of the strongest and most successful tourist attractions in South Georgia. Now she did this as a woman in a time period when women were unable to own property. Many people don't even know that a woman couldn't get a credit card until 1970 and that Georgia didn't ratify women given the right to vote until 1970. So this time period was an incredibly limited time for women and um, certainly in rural patriarchal South Florida it would have been. Over on the um, south wall, you see a couple of art exhibits that we put together. You can see Laura driving a car. She was the first person in Grady County to own an automobile. You see paychecks there that she was written. I love those three paychecks because there's different time periods. And if you notice, her husband's name is not on any of the accounts. That says a tremendous amount about what the community thought about her personally. Also, it is our privilege to share with you that um, a few years ago, the Georgia House of Representatives recognized the value of Laura Pope Forrester and Pope's Museum and passed a House resolution. So it is an exciting place to see where you get an idea of a woman who fought for women's rights in a time period when it was um, unbinding if a woman signed even a will without her husband's permission. This is Laura Pope Forrester's bedroom. 
Now, you have to understand that in 1911, when Mr. Pope died, she was a single woman with two sons, 1,600 acres, the store across the street, the postmistress, and many other areas of responsibility during a time when women were thought to be incapable of handling such responsibilities. So to say that she had plenty of suitors is the understatement, so much so that she carried a derringer under her skirt and ended up shooting a man in the thigh and told the man, if you come bother me again, I'm going to aim higher. Interpret that however you would like to. Um, in this room is another original Laura Pope Forrester painting where she talks about how she loved gathering the paints, um, berries, and creating her own paint from um, pieces on the property. There have been pieces found all over the 1,600 acres, and there are some that exist off-site. We are a nonprofit organization that is focused on showing the story and the artwork of this amazing trailblazer in women's history. In fact, the property itself is on the National Registry of Historic Places, acknowledged for art and its impact in women's history. And Laura herself has been inducted into the Georgia Women of Achievement and the United States National Daughters of the American Revolution as an American patriot, artist, visionary, and entrepreneur. She truly was an extraordinary woman. This is our absolutely most delightful room and certainly the hometown favorite. You're standing in the balcony of the second story of Pope's Museum. And a lot of people love the room, but they'll love it even more when they love the backstory. You can see her signature globs of concrete with her finger indentations in it. But what you might not realize is that these are sewing machine legs and model T wheels. Because when Laura made this room in the 1930s, the only job that a woman could have was working in the textile mills all over South Georgia. She worked for $3.78 a day. And incidentally, she didn't get that paycheck. The paycheck was written to her husband. So Laura made a beautiful room to showcase not only the artwork that she had inside of her, but to show that just like these sewing machines are strong and beautiful and have more than one use, women are strong, beautiful, and should have more than one use. So this is the oldest piece on the property. It is 104 years old, and Laura made it right after World War I. You have to understand the context that women were not allowed at that time in the United States military. And so the only time that a woman could serve her country is if she joined the Red Cross. Laura found out that there was not one memorial to those women who served anywhere in the world at that time. And so she determined that she could use this property and her passions to make that statement false. She created a life-size statue of the Red Cross nurses. You can see that just the sculpture alone, remember made out of concrete and sand, is showcasing the original Red Cross uniform right down to the leather straps on their boots, okay? And it says at the bottom, in honor of the Red Cross. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that I really want you to understand is that Laura decided to make a statement that men and women are equally necessary for success in America. And so when she did all of her work, she wanted to say thank you to the veterans, thank you to the women, and thank you to the women who worked. So this particular nurse is holding up a veil where she personally hand carved the names of the men from Grady County who unfortunately did not make it home from World War I. So you're standing in front of Laura's great work, a 100-foot wall memorializing both Martha Berry, the founder of Berry College, and pivotal moments in World War II. On the western side is the local side. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. And on the eastern side is the national side. So let's take a minute and talk about some key features on the local side. So in this side of the wall, Remember that Laura's goal was to showcase men and women working in solidarity, and nothing showcases that better than an Air Force nurse and um, Colin Kelly and Eugene Cohn, um, the first Air Force pilot shot down. So she literally shows these people 
hand in hand working together. Unfortunately, Laura had a lot of names to carve on this World War II memorial because this a marble slab talks about the men from 1943 who didn't make it home. This marble slab talks about the, the men from 1944 and 1945. In addition to the faces carved out of the mortar, there's also a grieving mother, a British nurse, and the Queen Mother. That would be Queen Elizabeth's mother. Incidentally, a fun fact is that in, 19, in 2017, we, our family, wrote Queen Elizabeth a personal letter to tell her that in a small town in South Georgia, there was a memorial to her mother. And imagine I, our surprise when a few months later we got a letter personally from Buckingham Palace. God bless the Queen. I am so thankful for this opportunity to showcase the message that Laura Pope Forrester did on this portion of the wall. Because as I mentioned earlier, women at this time during World War II were not permitted to serve in the armed forces in any way. In fact, it was 1976 before women were even allowed to enter the United States Military Academy. But after Pearl Harbor, Vice President Henry Wallace went before the Joint Council of International Council of Nations and both branches of the legislature and called for a huge cultural change. That change was to allow women the chance to serve in the United States military. And secondly, to urge women to go to work. As I mentioned in the balcony, career opportunities were very limited for women in the 1930s and the 1940s. So Laura, recognizing this cultural change and how important women were, made a sculpture in honor of all women in uniform who have done their best in winning this war. And you see an eight foot sculpture of a woman in uniform. And on the right, you see a sculpture of a woman where it says, to the women of America who by their industry and service helped preserve our way of life. But center of it is General Eisenhower, the leader of the greatest invasion in history, commonly known as D-Day. It is no accident that Laura chose General Eisenhower to be the centerpiece of this statue honoring the impact of women and men working together because after the war, on the hearings on World War II, General Eisenhower declared publicly that if it wasn't for the women serving side by side with the men, the war would have never been won by America. So this is an amazing piece of both military history and women's history. Thank goodness for Laura preserving this slide of the rest of the story. Thank you for letting me share a little bit about the story of this amazing woman, Laura Pope Forrester, and her art environment known as Pope's Museum in Southwest Georgia. We would love to have you check out our website, popesmuseum.org, and personally come and visit us, and we will share so much more. This is truly a national treasure with its roots in Southwest Georgia. Before we head over to Laura Pope's gravesite, I want to thank the deans for their kind hospitality. I highly recommend that you make an appointment to see this unique and important South Georgia Art Museum. Located northeast of the Pope's Museum on Pine Forest Road is where you'll find the final resting place of Laura Pope Forrester. Written on her tombstone is the word, Be Loved. Laura Pope Forster was born with some amazing creative talents. She is buried next to her first husband, Benjamin Hill Pope, Sr. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed my video today, visiting Laura Pope Forster's home. 
And I wish the best for Michelle and Dan in continuing Laura's legacy. Remember to please subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified when I release my next video. And always remember, your adventure awaits with the Danovator. I'll see y'all next time.